I love reviews and comparisons that are easy for me, the creator. For you out there on the fence between these two lenses, the Sony 200 to 600 and the Sony 100 to 400, I think this could be a tricky decision. Okay, it's not that hard, and I'm going to make it easier for you in a minute. But first, let me tell you that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Look, the new year is around the corner. If you don't have a beautiful place to display your beautiful work, consider Squarespace. Gorgeous starting templates make it easy to build a beautiful portfolio, gallery. Maybe you want to start a business and sell online. Squarespace offers all of that and more. You can save 10% off your purchase price starting at squarespace.com slash photorectv. Here's why this video is easy for me to make. Both of these lenses, the 200 to 600 and the 100 to 400, are excellent. They're sharp, they're fast to focus, and they both provide consistently good results. They're very, very similar in that respect. So let's hit some stats to make some more comparisons. The Sony 200 to 600 is an f5.6 to 6.3 G stabilized lens that costs $2,000. Its minimum focus distance is about seven and a half to eight Feet, and it weighs four and a half pounds and uses 95 millimeter filters. It's about 13 inches long. Here it is in my backlight 26L attached to my Sony a7R 3 And here is the 100 to 400. The 100 to 400 is an f4.5 to 5.6 GM stabilized lens that costs 2,500. Its minimum focus distance is just over three feet and it weighs about three pounds and uses 77 millimeter filters. It's important to note the 200 to 600 zoom is completely internal. Nothing changes as you zoom except inside. The 100 to 400 is not like that and you definitely get some air pumping happening. Both are weather sealed. Both offer focus hold buttons and focus limiters and optical stabilization switches. Though the 200 to 600 has an additional focus limiter switch and an additional mode three for stabilization. That's more useful for irregular motion like birds in flight. One benefit of the 100 to 400 is the inclusion of the zoom tightening ring. It allows you to really lock down that ring and make sure that it doesn't creep. 200 to 600 is missing that and I did find a little bit of lens creep to be possible and as time goes on, you'll probably notice that more and more. I've been shooting with both of these lenses to compare over the last couple of weeks and also using them with the 1.4 extender. And I wanna dive in for just a moment into some quick comparison photos. Anytime that I happen to get a long lens in for testing and it coincides with a full moon and a clear night in Seattle, well, here is the default shot immediately. We had a beautiful clear full moon back in November. I photographed this. This is actually with the 200 to 600 and the 1.4 teleconverter on. Really pleased with the results. We've got great detail up there along that contrasty edge of the moon. This is, of course, cropped from the main image. You can see that. But I still find this to be spectacular results. Now, I was going to take this down to Alki Beach and uh, present a beautiful view of our downtown skyline here in Seattle. But as I started to step out of the car, I heard two eagles talking to each other and looked up and there they were sitting in a tree not too far away. Now this presented some challenging conditions for testing the lenses because the light conditions were changing pretty rapidly. Uh, bright sun one moment, dark clouds the next. And so it's hard to make some really good decisions about the sharpness and clarity and contrast of the 100 to 400 versus the 200 to 600 looking at these pictures, but they do nicely illustrate something else. So let's switch over to Photoshop for a second. And here we are in Photoshop. And what I've done is I've layered the images starting with the 100 to 400 all the way up to the 200 to 600 with one four teleconverter. You can see them labeled down here on the right hand side. This gives us a really nice sense of the difference in zoom that you'll see with each of these. So here's a shot with just the 100 to 400. Here's a shot with the 100 to 400 and the 1.4 teleconverter. 200 to 600, and again, these are all at their longest focal length, so this is at 600. 
and 200, 600, and the 1 4 teleconverter. Let's zoom in a little bit more, just really kind of fill the frame with these guys. Here we are at 150%. Certainly see some loss of detail in the brighter areas. That's more my exposure issues than lens issue. Back up to 200 to 600, back to 100, 400 with the 1 4 teleconverter, and the 100 to 400. Now I have a separate video that I produced last year on the 100 to 400 and the 1.4 teleconverter. I've used that lens combo extensively all over the world, and I've been really, really happy with the results. I was quite surprised when putting it up against the 200 to 600 how much better the 200 to 600 seemed in many shots. So while we can't really compare so well sharpness and contrast with these, I did shoot some boring building shots. So this shot is the 100 to 400, upscaled to match 600 millimeters. Just, I was curious, what does that look like? So here we are at the Smith Tower, one of our oldest skyscrapers here in Seattle. This is the 100 to 400. This is the 200 to 600. Again, the light changed a little bit, which may throw you off and it might feel a little bit more contrasty. But let's zoom in. The point of focus was right here on the corner of the tower. Here's our 100 to 400. There's our 200 to 600. Not surprisingly, the 200 to 600 is a good bit cleaner and sharper. Maybe surprisingly, the gap is pretty significant. Um, or maybe you feel like they're pretty close. I'll put both of these up for you to take a look at as a link right down below this video. Let's go back to Lightroom and look at a few more examples. Back to those eagles for just a moment. Here's another example of what does 600 get you versus 400. So we have the 200 to 600 on the left and we have the 100 to 400 on the right. Pretty significant difference. Both of them are fantastic lenses I've found. Both offer some really good sharpness and clarity and contrast over the course of the range. But that 600 certainly gets you a good bit closer. Now let's look at some boring examples that allow us to really make some comparisons on sharpness. Let's start at 200 millimeters. This is 200 millimeters in f8. We have the 200 to 600 on the left, the 100 to 400 on the right. If we uh, zoom in to one to one, focus was not on the Space Needle because that was off center a little bit, but on this apartment building right here. And we can see that both do very, very well. If I had to pick a winner at one to one, I would probably lean towards the 100 to 400, but it is so very close that uh, I think it's difficult. I do notice that I have a dust spot that shows up there in the 200-600. If we head up to the corner, though, I think things are um, maybe a little bit different with that 100 to 400 in this case being a little bit better up in that top left corner than the 200 to 600, but it is very, very close in this example. Let's move on to 400 millimeters. At 400 millimeters, we have a pretty noticeable difference. Again, 200 to 600 on the left. 100 to 400 on the right. Good bit sharper in that corner. But let's move down to our apartment building that was our focus point. There's just a tiny bit more light over on the 100 to 400, which seems to make it just a little bit sharper. But the difference is so very slight. And then as I was photographing, I watched this cormorant come into the harbor. And after diving, it came up with a shrimp. Now I think this nicely illustrates just how helpful a little bit more reach can be. So being able to go all the way to 600 and then in addition to that you can see that I cropped this image a good bit still provides me a decent resolution shooting with the Sony a7R4 allows you to really get a sense of what was happening here and see this shrimp being chomped by the cormorant. And then finally as I was about to leave I just had this nice encounter with a little sparrow. Now switching back and forth between autofocus on distant subjects and more near subjects like the sparrow, I found the autofocus of the 200 to 600 to be very, very snappy. I didn't do a ton of side-by-side -side autofocusing tests of the 100 to 400 versus the 200 to 600, but I did do a lot of research online. And it seems like in the real world, your differences between the 100 to 400 and the 200 to 600 are going to be very, very slight. And many of my wildlife photographer friends are picking the 200 to 600 over the 100 to 400 because of that increased distance and the fact that it is just so much more affordable.
I reached out to one of my friends. He's a fantastic wildlife photographer. He's got a YouTube channel and writes for F-Stoppers. This is Ryan Mintz, and he presented a couple of pictures that just shares kind of his happiness with the 200 to 600. He feels like he made the right choice and has just got some beautiful photos. You should follow him on YouTube and Instagram. Links to both of those are right down below this video. He presents lots of great reviews that would be helpful for wildlife photographers and or Sony photographers as well. Look, I own the 100 to 400. I've used it to take some of my absolute favorite photos over the last couple of years. It's an incredibly versatile lens. It's great for portraits, landscape, wildlife, and it's fairly compact size and reasonable weight means it travels really well. Add in the 1.4 extender, you gain some extra reach, which makes this a usable wildlife lens while still maintaining that travel friendliness. But these two together cost $3,000. And when I look at the increased zoom, the better aperture out at 600 versus using this with a teleconverter, and the fact that this is $1,000 cheaper than this combo, or at very least just $500 cheaper with a lot more range, that is awesome. This lens is fantastic. Really, the only downside is the size and the weight. If I had to personally pick between these two lenses, I would still pick the 100 to 400, simply because I travel often and occasionally have pretty serious weight restrictions when I am traveling. And also, wildlife photography makes up really just about 25%, maybe even a little less of my photography. And I really like the 100 to 200 range. When I look at my catalog data from the last year or two using this lens, when I shoot with a 100 to 400, I shoot almost as often at the 100 range as I do at 400. Again, that's where those portraits and uh, landscape just really shines with this lens. But if you're looking to get serious about wildlife photography, the increased range and the savings make this a much better choice and I can happily recommend it. Really, you just need to be okay with the weight and the size. Spend the savings on a nice monopod. I'd love to know which lens you would pick and why. You can leave that in the comments right down below. You can find recommended accessories for both of these lenses in the description. Your use of those links greatly helps out. One of the awesome accessories that somebody sells is a Arca Swiss replacement foot. You can take this off and put that in, or you could just take it off and screw your own Arca Swiss plate on. If you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe along with clicking that little bell notification. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.